Thank you for the two dollars. My podcast had it right and yours didn't. Who cares? Thank you for the money. Can I please get a Papa Junior where I rings? Make it a meal so I can get a drink. Though I'm not finished, that's not everything. Can I please get a double waffle or no cheese? Can I please get a double two with a large drink? I got money so I don't care how much it costs me. So just throw me some extra fries, I'll make them salty. All the cheese gonna make my booty trip. I eat unproportional amounts of peanut butter. Dude. Same. I just finished this whole tub this morning. Chat, I've been watching the fight. Yuri gonna beat that dude's ass, dude. <clears throat> Yuri gonna beat his ass, dude. I'm starting to feel like Yuri's going to beat his ass, brother. Beat his ass. I've got a real feeling about it, dude. A real feeling. So we'll see. I don't know. You know when you can't shake the feeling? You know one of them ones, chat. When you know you should pick Pereira, but sometimes there's just that feeling of like, dude, I don't know, dude. I kind of have to. I should pick Yuri. I feel like Yuri's got it, man. I was watching the first fight back and I was like, dude, Yuri can adjust and he was doing very well. I know he got torn apart his leg, but it's not like he was limping around. Yuri was doing very well against Pereira. And I think if he goes out there with less of a, it's UFC 300. No, not UFC 300. It's the, the badass Chad on Chad. If he goes out there with more of the style of, I need to win, I think he can win. I think he could maybe win. Yuri's best chance was the first fight. I disagree. I absolutely disagree. You want to know why? Yuri'd been out for ages. People don't talk about that enough, chat. Pereira was fresh off of beating Jan Blahovic and barely taking any damage. Yuri, before that fight, was coming off of the worst injury that we've maybe ever seen, shoulder injury. They were always talking about it's the worst shoulder injury we've ever seen. And he was coming back after... How long off? A year and five months? That's not Yuri's way, dude. That's not the Yuri. Yuri likes activity. Yuri likes momentum. That's what Yuri likes. Just finish a fight. Let's get back in there. That's Yuri. I don't know if he had staff. I'm not sure. But I, what I do know is he'd been out for a year and five months. You know what I mean? Do, 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 do. What excites you so much about Yuri? Dude, don't you just want Yuri as a representative for our youth? <laughs> I also want Pereira as that, but I think we can juggle both. Who's with me on that? You know what? I know it's weird to see it in that way, but I really do value a good role model as a champion. <laughs> I really do, dude. I think we need Yuri as champ. Like, we need that look as champ and Pereira as champ and. Aspen hours champ. Like we can have a really healthy set of role models as champions sometimes. You know what I mean? Sometimes you got John Jones and Adesanya, and it's like, ugh, you know what I mean? Uh, moral maxing, exactly. Yeah. It's like, God, this is who the kids are gonna look up to as the most badass. This fruitcake and this fucking wife beater. You know what I mean? So I, I do like a good bit of healthy masculinity as the as the championship, as the champs. That's why I don't really like O'Malley as champ. Everyone was like, why are you hating O'Malley? He's a superstar. He's, he's fun. He interacts with you online. Like, why do you hate on O'Malley coming up? And I was like, dude, I'd rather Peter Yan. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'd rather have Peter Yan as champ, dude. I really would. You glaze O'Malley. Now he's a champion, but I'm saying in terms of when he was a candidate to become champ, I was like, no, let me have Yan as champ, you know? Um, Yuri took too much damage in a Rakic fight? Maybe. I think he'll be more damaged than Pereira going into that. Someone said earlier, though, they were talking about the fact that Pereira mentioned that he was injured. And Yuri has been training. So, And also, Pereira originally said no. So that's what I heard as well. Allegedly, Pereira initially said no. And then they came back to him and he said yes. So, I don't know. He broke his toe, right? I think so, yeah. He has a foot injury. Yeah, he broke his uh, little toe. Not too bad, though. We broken toes easy is fine. Yeah, yeah. But that original saying no, maybe it was smart just to get the fight with more money. 
But um, it could have been like, oh, I don't know. Okay, maybe, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Probably a money thing, yeah. Chewy weep. Remember people's narrative leading into 259 that Izzy would beat Yan because he was a heavyweight kickboxer? Than when he loses, it's because of weight. Yeah, I know. But remember, dude, you know what the most annoying thing of all history in the UFC is, chat? And I'm going to say this right now. Who, who's, are you ready? The most annoying thing in UFC history is Israel Adesanya fucking fake weight cutting for his fight with Jan Blachowicz and making himself come in way under to give himself that excuse and everyone buying it. Dude cut from like 220 something pounds for that Jan Blachowicz fight down to about 203 or whatever it was, 201, maybe 220 he cut from there. He cut for that fight and everyone's like, dude, he's so light. He came in under the limit. He weighed more against Pereira at middleweight. He cut weight for the Jan Blachowicz fight. And I hated that for ages, dude, because it was like 200 pounds, 199 or some shit. He didn't weigh 193. He didn't. He weighed like one, 199, 200. It was around, I think it was 201 or some shit. But yeah, he had a pizza at the way in. Yeah, he played this whole narrative that I'm so small. And I'm so much smaller, which he is, but he cut weight. He absolutely cut weight. On Embedded, he was crying in his hotel room with towels over him. He cut weight for the fight. And they even weighed him on, on fight day against Pereira. Remember, he came in at like 210 at middleweight? 205, some shit. Like, he wasn't lesser for when he fought Blahovic. He was looking bigger. It really annoyed me when people just let him get away with that bullshit, dude. Literally a built-in excuse. That's why I hate him, dude. He's such a fucking cunt. Jesus Christ. Like, it can't just be, oh, I fought him at my best and I won. He has to fake something beforehand. That was such a gay move from him. Um, Thank you for the $5. What's next for Izzy after Drickus beats the shit out of him? I guess he'll be shitless and no more shit to give. Um, I don't know. I guess Chimeyev? No, nah, they'll never do that. They'll never, ever, ever, ever do that. He'll never have to fight a dangerous contender coming off a loss for a belt. Uh, they'll probably do him versus like Cannoneer 2 or some shit. I could actually see them trying to pull that shit off as well. Oh, we do Cannoneer a favor by still giving him a top fight, even though, you know, the stoppage. Uh, meanwhile, they're just giving Izzy a layup again. You know what I mean? I only doubt Drickus because this is contender Izzy. Yes, of course. How could we forget? Uh, Drickus needs his entrance song to be I Just Can't Wait to Be King from The Lion King. No, no, because he's already king. But he does need to walk out to a Lion King song, but not, I just can't wait to be king. No, not that. Don't hate on John. Have you not heard from Rogan how he opened up the Shogun fight with a flying knee? Oh my God. The six foot three and a half athletic phenom opened up with a flying knee against a fucking fat sack of messy shit five foot 11 Shogun Hua. No way. Two years after he got fucking exposed by Forrest fucking Griffin, that shit fighter. No way did John's, Jones do that, dude. Impossible. I don't believe it. Next thing you'll be telling me, nearly all of his opponents were five foot eleven, other than the ones that he struggled with in Gustafson and Reyes, that just so happened to be six foot four. His size. No way, bro. What's up with these guys like Go MMA and shit? He's a clip channel. I hate the current clip channels, though. I will say that. It's no longer about funny moments for them. It's just getting the views. But I get that's what it's become. But I used to like when clip channels are put together, like, you know, when they were actually fans of the channel and they would like find a funny moment where chat laughed and we're laughing together and chat's chucking jokes in and I'm reading them and it's making it funnier. Now those classic moments, they don't get like put up as clips anymore. Those are the classic moments. But nowadays it's just like Guru said something that will get people to comment. I'll post that. Uh, Guru said something controversial about this. Let's post that. Yeah, you know I mean, that's all it is. That's all it is these days. It's it's kind of lame, but it's all good. Um, I'm not saying what clip channels do that. It's just that the clip channels do not orientate around the most entertaining clips. They just they orientate around the most controversial or the ones that are going to get the most hate comments or just interaction via hate comments, I guess. Like, the worst take I say every stream is on a clip. And every stream, I'm going to have a worst take. The worst one will be a clip. Fact. Every time. Undeniable. We could have a funny moment. 
never see it again. Go MMA, you say the wrong thing and I can neutralize a source of your income in a snap of the fingers like that. You little leech parasite human. Add that to the outro of your fucking video.